Welcome back to C4 on Veterans Network. This is our fifth and concluding discussion on Agent Orange. One of our guests, Dave Culmer, had to leave a little early. He had to attend a funeral for the American Legion. We'll miss Dave. However, the remainder of my guests, Chad Mishad, Judith Coburn, Tad Foster, thank you folks for uh, staying intact and uh, hanging in there. Here's where we stand today. If you served in Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, or offshore between 1962 and 1975, you are presumed by the VA to have been exposed to Agent Orange. If you served along the Korean DMZ in 68 and 69, you also are then presumed to be exposed to Agent Orange. And therefore, if you are diagnosed with any of the 11 presumptively recognized conditions, then you should file a claim. On our part four, Mr. Rosenblum read those conditions off to us. I'm going to go over them again and we will detail them. First is on the list is chloracne. This is a skin condition similar to common acne, excessive oiliness of the skin, blackheads. It must occur within one year of exposure to Agent Orange. Number two is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is malignant tumors that affect the lymph glands and lymphatic tissues, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Number three is soft tissue sarcoma. This is malignant tumors in muscle, fat, blood, lymph vessels, and connective tissues or soft tissues within and between the organs. Number four is Hodgkin's disease. This is a malignant lymphoma, which is cancer of the lymph nodes, the liver, the spleen, and the cause of progressive anemia. Number five is perforia cutanea tarda, a disorder characterized by liver dysfunction and by thinning and blistering of the skin in sun-exposed areas. Number six is multiple myeloma. This is cancer of specific bone marrow cells characterized by bone marrow tumors. Number seven are respiratory cancers of the lung, the larynx, the trachea, and the bronchus. Number eight is prostate cancer. Number nine is peripheral neuropathy a nervous system condition that causes numbness, tingling, and muscle weakness. Number 10 is type 2 diabetes. Number 11 is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, slow progressive production of excessive white blood cells. You can also get additional information on these conditions as well as information on birth defects from the Agent Orange review that we mentioned earlier. But still, we're not pleased. Things still move way too slow. Plus, you know, now there's the question of the, under, the underfunding of the VA, right. and they're so far behind in, you know, in processing clients. They keep every, that's what we they need. keep I the think whole arena. Right. From the VA to the veteran, information, cover-up, understaffed, underfunded. But the inability to the VA themselves to even acknowledge that they're underfunded and understaffed right now. So, I mean, because at that well, point... they've been lying about it. Right, uh, but that's the whole point. I mean, that's... I mean, their estimates on how many vets are going to treat from Iraq and, and uh, Afghanistan oh, this are criminal. Some, yeah. Hey, we've got to... I'm, I've been approached to write a book with the journalists. It kind of reminds me of you. Uh, 
on uh, TBI and PTSD. We've mm -hmm. never treated that combination. TBI? Traumatic you? brain injury. Oh, okay. they're saying Almost that. 13,000 of them yeah. in this war. And they're making, they're, I read, they're and making the a connection. PTSD between between the PTSD and the overlap. Traumatic so brain injury. I yeah. may take a stab at it this year. Because it know. doesn't show. But there's, we, no, there's no way we can treat it, even the best. I mean, there's... Right. Shad, if anybody needs to be there, it's you. This is C4. We'll be right back. C4, we are back, and we are still not pleased. It is a long process. Like, you know, for Vietnam vets, 30, 35, 40 years down the road. Some people just say, you know what? I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to go mm -hmm. kill myself trying to go in and get that information. Well, and, and you know, right now, uh, <laughs> there's a six-month to two-year waiting list for your claim to be processed by the VA. I mean, we haven't talked about that. I mean, the no. VA is not funded uh, by the government enough to have enough claims processors to make this, you know, routine, simple process. So you can imagine uh, all the things Shad says are true, and then you add to that that, you know, the guy goes into the VA, or the gal goes into the VA, and, you know, anecdotally is going to hear in the, going to meet in the halls people who have been, you know, waiting two years to have their claims processed, and other people who finally got their claims pro processed and were denied, and now they're on appeal, and that takes four, five years. I mean, this is Dickensian. I mean, it's, you know, this is not an, an easy process. No. Yeah, the it's approach. another battle, you know. It's, it's another, another battle. And exactly. It apparently, well, yeah, it's another battle. Of, ironically, it's another battle of attrition. Um, not this when the government's winning. And uh, because I, I question just how many veterans just gave up, just got tired of, oh, out of no. frustration. No, no. right. It's just, and that, I mean, right now, currently, there are 400,000 claims coming right up to the Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom before the Veterans Administration. So what do we do? I think that, you know, veterans have got to fight to fully fund the VA in the same way that they fought, you know, to create PTSD and treatment for that and to create the issue of Agent Orange and, you know, compensation for that. Well, like, number one, this was a commitment on the part of the United States government. This was the commitment when I signed, you signed, Shad signed. This was a commitment that we put our neck on the line. This is going to be for us when we have a problem, physical problem, uh, psychological problem, whatever that problem may be, that this is the commitment that the American people have made, the United States government. I think that we're looking at underfunding. There's, there's just there's one solution. I mean, it's, boom, Congress. Next appropriations for war, Department of Defense, put in matching funds, or put in $2.1 billion to make sure that whether we're dealing with an escalation in Iraq, whatever we're dealing with, that the money is on the table for the people who are fighting this war. Right. Well, now, now, Tad, take the American public, particularly the American non-veteran public, when they see troops going to war, do we feel that they're actually equating it to that, okay, there's so many thousand going over there and so many thousand are coming back? I mean, what Tad said is exactly right. You know, you I, gotta I, buy it on the front end and you gotta buy it back on the back end, folks. I think you one know? of the problems is that the average American who doesn't have a relative who fought in a war or didn't fight in a war himself or herself doesn't have any idea about these Veterans Administration issues. I no. mean, they are that those issues are fought, you know, by service organizations, and I thank God they exist, and political organizations and foundations like SHADS and, you know, Veterans for America. But but that debate is essentially cut off from the, you know, American public. The right. media does not cover, you know, the Veterans Administration. I mean, when I write pieces about the VA, people and, and have the most elementary facts, you know, where I just try to explain how the compensation system works. 
I mean, people, you know, I get readers who say, I just had no idea any of this was an issue. You know, the media does not cover the VA. It's regarded as some kind of very technical thing that only has to do with soldiers. And I think one thing that could be very important in terms of veterans campaigning to fund the VA is I think veterans have to go outside the veterans community to put political pressure to fund the VA. You know, people do not understand about these issues. And yeah. I think that vets, you know, it's completely understandable, but they're essentially talking to themselves or talking to the, preaching to the choir. Right. right. And, you know, but Americans need to understand. That's what, that's what I was saying. We should, I mean, I think people who are watching this program should contact their congressman and senator. And, I and talk feel to people who should, weren't in the military. Right. And right. demand that <laughs> the next appropriations bill, there are appropriations put in the Department of Defense to put the money up front to deal with these veterans who are uh, with these Americans who are coming home now or coming home in the future. I mean, the, the s government's own statistics are is that there will be 16 wounded for every mortality in the Iraq war. So here we go again. What do we do about it? Let's make and some now more the VA noise. doesn't have the money to take care of I'm people okay. who put their ass on the line. What do we do about it? Okay, next appropriations bill call? that goes before Congress. Write your congressman and senator and demand that they make matching funds with respect to the reconstruction in Iraq. They put 2.1 million in Iraq, put 2.1 million in the Start VA early. to make sure that we're taking care of those who are fighting the war. It's real simple. Well, yeah. fund you the know, VA. matching funds. Fund well, the VA. that's it. Do it. Yeah, it's real simple. Then we, we resolve some of the problems. They're underfunded. Yeah, we, okay. 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 I think the, the biggest message is to organize early. Yeah. There's Iraq and Afghanistan yeah. vets early right. and, and rock. And the more organization you have and the more focused you are, uh, use people like me, uh, which I'm already involved with IVA. Uh, yeah, there are all these Iraq organizations. And right I support them all the time, and I yeah. show them. And when the, when the news teams come to me, I bring them on. More in a minute. This is C4. We are back, and folks, we will keep marching. You know, it's, it's all about consciousness. Right. And what I have learned in 36 years is you got to roll up your sleeves. I hope everybody that watches this show realizes, for those of us here, we're here because we're still fighting the battle, and there's a lot to learn from us. And one thing is to organize, contact your congressman, get organized with any veteran group, no matter what it is, something you feel comfortable with, and don't just be a follower. Stand up, just like we'll disagree about different things about veterans' things, whether it be about benefits or psychological, mental, whatever, but speak out. The worst thing you can do is be quiet. I think in this country, and back to Rick, your question that you were asking, I don't think people are conscious after the first year and after 9-11 and the going into Afghanistan or whatever, and it's like a TV show. After a while, it's like, let's change the station. And who wants to watch something that makes me uncomfortable? Very few people participate in war. They can watch it on TV or turn it off, but it's a very small percentage. I would guess less than 2% of a population in our country actually serve in a combat zone. That's just a guess. But the bottom line is, is that those people know. It's very important to be just as organized as you were in the service, more so today, and to use those, those skills to organize to get the word out, at least to those that are serving or going in. You know, in my foundation, we speak, we go to the high schools and colleges. We don't put down the administration or whatever because all administrations have been involved in some type of attack or form of war. Not that it, it's, Not that it may or may not be warranted. We just say, hey, this is the reality of it. And just don't expect that all this hoopla and bumper stickers about going is the same coming back because you're like a spent round. You know, once you have done your thing and you're back, you're just sort of on the ground, you're on your own. Well, I, I spent, uh, at a, I'll just digress for a minute, but this is a classic example. I spent, uh, uh, well, let me put it this way. I got a letter on December 7th from the Department of Veterans Affairs 
And they said they made a, quote, clear and unmistakable error, unquote, regarding uh, a gunshot wound I received from an AK-47. Um, they realized that after 37 years that sh I should have been service-connected for nerve and muscle damage. That seemed to miss the equation for 37 years. So as I said before, you're dealing with an issue of attrition here with the VA, and anybody who is going to file a claim, you're going to have to be incredibly patient and you just gotta sink your teeth in their leg and don't let them shake you loose. That's the only way to do it. This, the other thing I was saying, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's right. And this generation of veterans, you know, because we're not gonna be here forever speaking it, and that, my whole career's been that, is you better, you better make noise and make sure you have a lot behind your noise. I don't mean just yelling and screaming, but have your facts like we do here in this presentation today. Have your facts, organize, and remember to, you know, if you go inside, you know, no one's going to know it. It's just like, uh, you know, Pepsi battling Coca-Cola. It's constant marketing, PR, PR. And uh, that's how we made changes. And even though as I look back today, whether it was in readjustment counseling or Agent Orange or, or anything, it was just a few. It wasn't a large amount of people that really had their stuff together and kept making noise. And I don't mean, you know, very focused noise, just like... You know, Bruce Lee could be 130 pounds and can knock down a 300-pound man because it's where you put the punch. Amen. So I'd like to thank my guest for helping me out here on this. I'd also like to thank our viewers for checking this out on C4. And remember, this is for you, the veteran. Any comments or questions you may have on the subject of Agent Orange, please email us. Let us know what you think. This subject may continue. I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Rosenblum back in Silver Springs, Maryland. Donald, thank you so much for helping us out. And uh, thank you for your many years of service with the VA and congratulations on your retirement. Well, thank you. And I want to mention that um, I'm volunteering now at the VA Medical Center, and uh, they, they, can, they can always use more volunteers. So if any of you are interested, contact the nearest uh, VA Medical Center Voluntary Service, and, uh, and uh, you, can, you can help out too. Thank you for that, Donald. Thank you. So what can America do to help our veterans? in situations such as what we've just discussed here with Agent Orange? One answer is obvious. The VA is underfunded. It is understaffed. The VA and many other veterans aid programs need money. And money comes from tax dollars, which is not usually easy to get. One thing that is usual is that our vets are usually too proud to beg. They are usually the silent strength that this country stands on. Corporate America, you can help. Create an American fund, create a foundation. And I think that could make us all very proud. For Veterans Network, this is C4. I'm Rick Seaman. Out.